I think we're going to go on, not necessarily with the review, but with the continuation. Last time we in the introduction session, we briefly mentioned the mind of Christ. We're going to continue about that topic. With this, actually, the fear of the law, the same topic. I think for me was um, a, a transformative process in my spiritual growth. And so from more shallow or more ignorant ways my own, the more traditional ways of thinking about things come to more and more God begin to teach me on a deeper way, some with divine revelation, some to do his experiences. Uh, for sure others on the way has been tremendously helpful for my understanding on this subject. As we hinted before, you know, uh, Brother George Warnock um, has been very helpful in my spiritual growth, uh, especially in the day when J John Tim and I we found his writing back in the days of Austin. You know, so uh, the other one is uh, David Prince. That's from the start. My spiritual walk had been introduced to me. So and. Uh, but I don't have the chance to, those days is uh, information not published on YouTube so, uh, per se, so it's hard to get a hold of it. There's another brother uh, named uh, Sam Solon, has been introducing me in the very early days through others as well, has a huge impact. So their framework of thinking, I think more and more I can confidently see the, how a positive teaching in the nature to do ministry, in the nature to expound the Bible, uh, but moreover in the nature of the disciple others or minister to others. So that being said, I do want to give a little bit of personal review, still growing, still expanding, still deepening, on my understanding about the mind of Christ, we then on talk about the fear of the Lord, because I don't think they are separate, per se. So, uh, I, while I pray this morning, and uh, even yesterday morning, I've been spending some time to pray how to go about these teachings. As you are aware, I don't necessarily review the past teaching either. I just go with, there's a, such a topic, has many ways to present it. So I always ask God, let me know how to present it. The Lord did give me a starting point he was telling me to review my own walk a little bit, register. So you, I think the similar path, most likely, as it should be every song's path. So the Bible clearly are the template. We can prove that. This teaching hopefully will draw that kind of a pattern of life, which I handed in the introduction session as well. How Jesus Christ was taught, am I, uh, as a song. You know, to a point, he's able to have the matured mind or, if you will, fulfilled mind, the complete mind, to able to discern what is good and evil, what is right or wrong. And right? that is a discipline, a training that he subscribed to as a son of man, to the living spirit of the son of the, uh, to the heavenly father, and right? was educated. So the similar life pattern you give to us, they don't tell me that he learned what? Obedience. Obedience, yeah, through the thing he suffered. I think there are two words oftentimes, we, just like many other words that have been misapplied or miscomprehended, mis, mis, misrepresented sometimes, mm -hmm. like a faith, a hope, Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes we narrow down to personal level, right? Mm -hmm. Peace, righteousness, joy, again, personal attributes, right? Mm -hmm. True, evidently, they are beneficial for our persons, but it's a culture characteristic to begin with, which today's talk, when we talk about the fear of the Lord, actually more likely is a characteristic of the culture of the Lord. So what the Lord is uh, revealing to me is about Speaking about the, let me start with the first, the growth of my spiritual understanding 
on the understanding of the fear of the Lord. Okay, I landed it well for the top of the mind of Christ. Um, this morning and the, it's continued last night with praying, the Lord began to really um, want me to start the topic today is talking the fear of the Lord, uh, have two fundamental approaches to understand, okay? One oftentimes is considered as a posture of a heart. You know, one come to this awesome, wonderful God, some mighty, some, you know, terrified, right? On um, Mount Sinai. So what we approach it with terror, right? With uh, fear, you know? So the Israelites, the day of uh, Moses on Mount Sinai, say, hey, please, you go, you go to this God, awesome God, because we are so terrified we don't want to get close to the mountain. Is that making sense to you? You know, so, but is that God's heart for the people we recognize? It was not, because Deuteronomy 8, I believe, at the chapter talking about, he longed to be a father in the 40 years he won, but they have this, uh, we're unhealthy attitudes or parts of heart on about a day, right? You know, carried on through their traditions and somehow uh, influenced by the Egyptian worship, their own gods there. So they have a very unhealthy idea of what it means to have a, a living God in, you know, talk to them and become their God. They become their people. So they have a very, very distorted view, if you will, of why God called them to be a set part of people. Am I? So we know that. But God through and through said, you are my firstborn. You know, I want you to be my sons. And I want you to teach you my way through my discipline. As they were incapable to receive him as a father figure. Am I? As one really long to be the father. But that's being said, so you, you, you then, because a positive heart is a one thing, then a contagion of what? our going in come before the sky. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like anything else in the beginning stage, your perception, your understanding, is pretty much only impressional, right? So it's not real. It's not in depth. It's not even practical sometimes. We call it childlike, you know, so, but God don't want us to be child or simplistic and right so he want us to know his heart he want to know his ways so i think that, that is what this christ grew into through the education and the discipline of the father by the power of the spirit that he eventually have matured in mind and right he matured in full stature as a spiritual son okay so i call it mature wisdom when you have matured wisdom, you begin to reconsider everything. You see things from a different light, you know. So even the fear of the Lord becomes a totally different thing for you. It's not um, lack of respect, lack of deference with this honorable, glorious God, but it definitely is not intimidated by Him. So that's the process I had in many stages of my walk. As in the beginning, I remember, I mean, the Bible, should I was a golden light. I thought it was a magic book. I better not mistreat it because if I do it, I'll be cursed. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, God have power, man. <laughs> it can smash me down. <laughs> so I remember I was so terrified. One day, I wake up in the homely shelter, I found my Bible in my, my seat, my, my foot. <laughs> I was so mortified by the fact that my feet, you know, the Bible were on my feet, you know, because I was carrying some bed, you know, forgot the Bible. I had to wake up to drag the Bible <laughs> to put it beside my pillow. You know, I thought God would be angry with me because I put my feet on the Bible. <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember every time I uh, taught the Bible, almost like it was a fear of trembling, you know. Oh my, this book, how power, you know? 
this is this is, there's a God behind this book, and uh, I found uh, repulsive and unsurprising to me. Found many people treat the Bible with a flippancy. It was very deceitful for me, you know. So um, that's more than because I love books, you know. And just saying what, you know. So um, just you know, uh, unbecoming to me, basically. So, but that's a, a sense of not necessarily bad, but it's definitely a immature attitude. Does that make sense to you guys? You know, so they begin encounter supernatural powers, supernatural things, it really scary. You. Me, <laughs> for me, I didn't grow up with a Christian background. I was not Nobody told me those things supposed to happen. <laughs> so, so when it happened, it really just like, uh oh, you know, what's this happened? What's taking place? You know, and God was a word kind to me. I was stubborn. At the same time, you know, man has this bipolar mode. I was basically bipolar with God. So, you know, so one mode were fearful. Oh, yeah, <laughs> better do what he tells me to do. On the other side, it's like, Oh, you get a give me answer, okay? Or else I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so this is bipolar mode. Uh, but God is so gracious to me. And he was he like that he know how to deal with a, a a donkey. I was the donkey and I said, definitely a donkey. And worst kind of donkey you can get to tell you. <laughs> In the mind. <laughs> and uh, God will stop the rain for me. You know, some lighting I mean, this thing is uncanny stuff. And I look at, what does that really happen? I'm not so sure. Do it again. <laughs> I mean, do it again. I mean, remember Mark Austin did there is a, periodically there's a rains, don't get a lot of work. I mean, it's so dumb poor. <laughs> I don't have an umbrella, I have to walk this day. I would have said, God, stop the rain for me. Uh, you can let the rain continue when I reach somewhere, okay? <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, one time, second time, the third time, really, is it really happening? I'm going to try it out. So I went out in the rain. You know, when the raining, I get out. <laughs> so I got out. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me try him out. <laughs> Sorry. It's dumb, but it's crazy stuff. I'm just talking about immature. But that's kind of fear of the Lord, I think, is still it's like a base on my senses, base on my own me, pretty much self-centered. And then gradually begin to know, oh, it's not about how I feel. I'm not the decider what it means to fear God. God is greater than merely taking care of a poor soul like mine. And so I began to, that time he actually sit, see many from other places and other people. So I was pretty sorted. And at that time, the glorious time, looking back, that's the time my life really took a, a wonderful turn. But it was most miserable and so wretched time. Uh, that's when I get to know John and Tim, those good friends <laughs> as well those days. Yilin is only 13 years old, she knew nothing, so endless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, she was a fun hunt around, but uh, okay, that's good. Yeah, exactly. So my point is that that time, really God began to show me that I miss a song in many ways, uh, supernatural ways. But about all, oh, it's using the Bible. It really proved that I am his son. And he called me, and I'm not born of my mother or father. I'm not born be a Chinese or American. I was not of this world. I really made that sure I understand it. Some divine counter for sure, but he proved through and through within the Bible. That's when I read the Bible differently. So I have this a huge affection rose up as a son. I I literally said. God, whatever it takes, whatever you want, I will do it for you. You know, whatever. My life is yours. You know, so uh, that's this very intense time. But I, my affection, respect, that time is not afraid of him anymore. He cared about me. 
He got my life. He created me, and he has his purpose for me. He literally tell me, "I, you are my chosen, right? You know, you are chosen one. You know, you know, I know you before you were born, and I so those kind of things very much lift you up. So I have a huge affection uh, towards this God, and I have uh, understand uh, through my culture, through my life with my father, to respect people, right? I mean, the best respect, and I, I always try to respect those who deserve my respect. You think? <laughs> so, but I have this a huge respect about this heavenly Father, uh, I, 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 and I definitely love have a huge affection towards him because I don't think they separate. So, so, I, but there was a young son, you know. And he, um, I think, came into the desert. God said, I want you to have my heart, am I? It's not this good, allow me to do everything for me as a son. I want you to understand my heart. And I don't know what that means, you know, without the family, without young people. And I don't know what that even means to be a father, am I? So I'm the single man. So, but God is able to do that. He bring you guys around. <laughs> I mean, and uh, I, I, and uh, but that process, however, it lifted me from this uh, also a confined place. Think my relation, my faithfulness, my fear or reverence to God is contingent on my own capacity. What I can do best. I'm not yet expanding myself. Wow, it's not about me. How I feel, what I can do. It was like a, I'm a part of the flu, and I am part of the greater scheme of things, and I so, and uh, there's much more for me to, to learn from there. So, and that's allowed me to understand. Well, those, the, when the Lord encouraged the disciple with the pastor, said he was in the spirit to reveal me in you and reveal the Father in you. So the revelation of the Father becomes so real to me. You see, he reveals the, I mean, hallelujah, he reveals the Father to me. The Father's heart, particularly. Because we often think the Father is contingent on his awesome power, his authority, his ways, his, but we don't necessarily understand his heart. Uh, when we sing that heart, we still think about, hmm, Hopefully we're not sleep, sleep, sheepish to come. Oh, I'm then careless by you. Oh, you really care about me. But I thought the more matured we, as a matured attitude, to understand God is who said who He is. You know, you got to know as who He is, and it, this we can only be know when you are son. It, it can only be know when you are a son. Through Christ Jesus, you know him. The Son is leading you to the way to know him. Well, it's hard to to really explain that, but I want to register the scripture right now in Luke 10. Come with me. Luke 10. But to ponder on this thing with a due diligence, because you'll find, wow, there's really, Jesus said everything is real. It's so practical. So, so in 21, see the joy, see the joy. Okay, mark that word. He delight, he's full of joy in 21. Said. He said he encouraged the disciple ahead of time in 20. He said, Do not rejoice that you can deal with demons or the devil, but rejoice that what? Your name written in heaven. So that's a two set of joys. To source of joy, is that right? Let's see, there are two things, two, two motivation, two, two reasons why you become joyful. You think about it? And the second one is said, wow, that's really worthwhile. Better than you cast demons out, <laughs> heal the sick, you know? <laughs> and that's a different experience as well. But this time, obviously, disciples have not yet even have a hint of it. So 21, he said, and that time Jesus followed joy through the Holy Spirit, he said, I praise you, Father. Very loud. Jesus was a, such a full, I, I think you each one have an encounter with Jesus. He's a, he's a full personality. I mean, 
when he wanted joyful, he will know it, you know. <laughs> when he's saying, okay. <laughs> when he's upset, mm, you know, come on. <laughs> he is a real person. I mean, our, there's no more, more genuine, more real than our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because, <laughs> I pray, what do you praise him for? <laughs> because he does something, he said. Have hidden the things from the wise they learn. Oh yeah, there's a slew of people in those days. It's called the Pharisees, am I? So scholar of the law. Lawyers of law. Reveal them to what? To little children. Obviously that's the disciple you're talking about, am I? It's not young baby, sometimes young boy, it's young girls. And uh, yes, father, this was your pleasure. Mark that word. What? Good. Pleasure. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about that. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is more than pure. It's a joyful. <laughs> but that's not normally. <laughs> we have been introduced what it means the fear of the Lord. <laughs> is <that> right? <laughs> the fear of the Lord in time is an Old Testament confess. God, if you don't do right, God is going to smoke you up. <laughs> <I'm so sorry. laughs> That's a, such a wrong way to introduce the Father. I mean, we need to really be modified as not today's standing. With the church history, how Christ Jesus as the Lord it has been introduced to people. On two grounds, we flippantly treat him as a man upstairs. <laughs> He's a GC. <laughs> oh, the one, <laughs> you know, about the whatever out there. But it's not real. They become an idol, an icon for people. Uh, on the other side, <laughs> he's just, uh, oh, don't do this, don't do that, he, you know, don't upset God, man, don't drink. He, he not going to the party with this guy. Remember the day I'm smoking, <laughs> and people come to me, <laughs> give me a hard time, play we time. <laughs> then God sues my soul, said, hey, you want some secret money? Okay, I'll send someone like you some money. <laughs> Type money! <laughs> wow. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't encourage everybody to drink or smoke. That's not my point. Not my point. <laughs> <laughs> it's God know how to deal with a miserable soul like mine, okay? <laughs> yeah. He know how to draw you close to him. Amen. He knows. Amen. That's what he did. So all things that come to me by my other father, there's a son speaking here. No one knows who the son is. Ha! Ah. So, <laughs> ha! Ah. <laughs> Think about it. Except the father. Wow! So think about it. If you really think about it, not your the theology. That means, the Holy Spirit had to bring what the Father knows about the Son to give to us, am I right? That revealed the Son to us. The Holy Spirit, one said ministry. He had double portion, guys. <laughs> he would speak to us about his Son on the Father's behalf. Ah, do you think about that? <laughs> that means the Holy Spirit is in the representation, in the name, or in the person of God, the Father. The TV realize who the son is. And you are meant to be revealed in you. On the other side, I said it. And no one knows who the father is except... Uh, ah! <laughs> That's a mind crisis, but... That's the seven spirit education, and hopefully will consolidate in your mind the register. That's how you know the father. How you know the son. Because it's a full spectrum the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. Amen? Wisdom, understanding, it must come from this <laughs> two portions. And no one knows, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, except the Son, and those are true, what? The Son chooses it to reveal. Ah, so He chose. That's a serious word there. <laughs> what it means. Well, he was talking about the lawyers, the scholars, the Pharisees, 
Hmm. I didn't choose them, but I choose you. Blessed are you for your discipleship. That choosing is, is marked by what? By conversion experience or discipleship. You can be converted to become a spiritual baby, but who going to disciple you or feed you, whatever, <laughs> with the spiritual food to lay out the communion, the table for you, the fellowship for you, the love feast for you. The riches of fear is on them table. Now, the eternal disciple privately said, Hey, bless I right here to go. Bless the eyes that see what you see. I tell you, many prophet kings want to see what you see. You did not see it. And hear what you hear. Did not hear it. On this contest, I'll also we're gonna wait a little bit, but I will call the slow characters. Before Jesus, do they know really how to fear God? In the way the Son of God wants his little one to know God? Ah, that's a mystery. <laughs> because the ministry, the Holy Spirit, has not fully be opened up. Am I? You have to be born of the Spirit to enter this kind of nourishment and provisions. That being said, so further along this way, God began giving more of uh, sensibility. I know that's a big word. You know, when God in the person is a son, said, You're my brother. We are fellow years. Right? That's equality. That's, that's almost a like blasphemers. Even though my question, thank you. But you have to understand that's your, who you are. That's the essence of the gospel. But you don't treat that with contempt or deceit or conceit. But you got to understand this is who you are. Much like Elijah and Noah. You're going to tell them they are not team son, they're not brothers. They have to treat each other or orange the relation from a different entry point. That's like, what? What? No one will be happy about it. For Elijah, no one will be happy, not happy about it. Tim will not be happy about it. They will say, no, no, no. You don't tell us how we relate to our my baby brother or my young son. And I, you just don't. Not your business, I'm just trying to agree a little bit. But <laughs> there's a template. There's a way we do this. And I want Elijah to fully know that he's a, a beautiful brother and will be a wonderful son. Am I? That's what is starting for. Well, is that not what being robbed of mankind from the beginning? So we must, through faith in Christ Jesus, it's a hope of glory. It's a hope of honor, actually. Glory, let's not think about the glorified body. It's a hope of honor. You'll be honored as a such. <laughs> Your name will be written in heaven. <laughs> You'll be a fellow son of God. And this is the gospel I understand, but uh, allow me. Uh, Hebrew, too. I mean, this is a serious stuff, but uh, we better start with a culture foundation or social orientation able to tease these things, but not, it pretty much the standard, flattered, we present the same topic. Hebrew 2. In 10, in bring many sons to this honor, this is a place of honor. In 2, Hebrew chapter 2, 10 now. In bring many sons to this place of honor, or endowment, it was a feeling that God looked for whom, through whom, everything exists should make the author that it is uh, the write your story, the one write your story, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Lamb made the life of the book of life open, right? Amen. Of their salvation, perfect. That is a perfect salvation, okay? Not, <laughs> I don't know, salvation fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, salvation needs to be perfected. Can you believe that? Grow up in your salvation. That's what it means. And this is the Hebrew book. Jesus talked about the same thing. Peter talked about the same thing. Like a newborn baby for for H for H O S <laughs> for their sake. <laughs> First Peter talking about the newborn baby. Okay, craving for pure spiritual milk. What are those milk? First Peter two. Well, that for, for one hundred twenty three is a word of fact. For you have been born again. Not the perishable seed, but the imperishable, that is the internal life. Through the living and you dear word of God. Not the word on stone, not the word on pages, but the what? The living and enduring word of God. Therefore, in to now, start there. Read yourself all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, bad stuff, this city. Now, to now, like what? Newborn baby. Praying for spiritual muscles so that by it, do this. And the seven spirit of God that pray, uh, I pray will be a template. Or you receive in progressive way, if you will, the better provision of God's spiritual nourishment. You by it, it may grow up, grow up. <laughs> that is from a baby to a full standard of man. Spiritually speaking, in your salvation, now that you taste the Lord's good, come taste the Lord. That's a quotation now. I'm going to talk about it today. Can you can taste the fear of the Lord? The quotation from 34 chapter, uh, 34 Psalm, David's Psalm. But we're going to talk about it later on. But back to this place in Hebrew 2. So your salvation perfect through discipline. Uh, we prescribe the way you must go through. And then talking about, by this you enter into the privilege or the honor of assumption. Both the one who made man holy, the one who made holy, out of the same family, the same fatherhood. Okay? Hallelujah. Therefore, Jesus is not ashamed because the man, brothers. Songs the same father that what it means. Hallelujah. And there you go. I don't have the further on, you can read yourself. But uh, back to the place where we started. Um, so then you from that place, I'm gonna turn with me to fit F Philippines. I forgot to quote the scripture, sorry. <laughs> Philippines 2. So what this mind Christ or this positive heart or this attitude approach look like? Is make you considered or rather make you learn to be truly humble, truly meek? There lies a template Paul laid out for us that was in two chapter Philippines, okay? This is deeply related to how to fear God, how you fear God as a son. So in 2 5 said, your attitude, that is your mindset. You will approach these things. So that is a mind of Christ. Should it be the same as Jesus Christ? The same, you know, have the same mind of Christ, like Christ's mind, a son's mind. Who talking about the, this attitude now? It begins to give characteristic this mindset. Who being the same in nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to grasp. Now, if you something let it go, not grasp a hold on it, it doesn't mean you don't have it, right? So it's after you have it, then let it go. It's not a propose. Most Christians say that you should never have it. That means humility. I said, making this means, or this humility means, you first have the habit, then you let it go, lay it down. Amen? Hallelujah. Who going to offer a sacrifice on the altar when you don't have nothing to offer? You have to be a living sacrifice, blameless, flawless, perfect, in every way, in a sense, so that you can be a sacrifice. Is that making sense to you? Yeah. 
So can you do become a living sacrifice and still have blemish, imperfect, that is it's not approved? Mm, that's an interesting question there. That was something fixing means. I'm going to make you a living sacrifice. No. So then he was made himself nothing. Let's see who made himself nothing. The two processes. Eh? God made him a man born of a woman, right? <laughs> So that's God designed it, lower than the angels to start with. But when he grew up, he said, I can't go angels <laughs> to do anything now. But did he do it? He laid his own will down, his own passion, his own preference down, and conform himself to the preference of the flesh of the Father by dying on the cross. So there's another laying down. Not laying down. So, is that making sense to you? Mm -hmm. I think the Lord wants us to do the second laying down. Mm -hmm. As we mature, then we laid it down. Am I right? So, is that making sense to you? Mm -hmm. Much like when he's speaking to Peter in the last part of the Gospel, John said, When you are young, you will put something on your dress yourself, bustle around, go where you want to go. You know? But when you're old, Someone else will dress you, and you'll be led to go where you don't want to go. So that is a laying down. That's a laying down. That's the suffering. The suffering there is, devote your life on a higher purpose, suffer the suffering of Christ. So you don't do things you want. You want to know what truly a good question is? A good question is it by by, by definition, they will not do what they want. That can be done in a five years old, like a boy, and can be done by 85 years old, old man. But the same attitude is Christ like. Amen? Hallelujah. Is that making sense to you? The age does not define the attitude, the attitude is unchangeable. Maybe God require a five years old do things differently. Give up your toy. <laughs> Share with your friend. Amen? 85 may be different, right? So, yeah. Give up your assets. Yeah? Share with the poor. Something different, right? So I'm saying. But it's the same God and appealing to the same human nature to come be alive and aligned with a higher life embodied, exemplified by our Lord Jesus Christ. And being found in appearance, uh, being made in human likeness, I mean, he take on what? I'm sorry, he take on the word nature of uh, a slave. That's a bond slave, a servant is a good word to put it, but uh, you know, and bond slave means somebody, hey, do this, do that. You know, you don't have yourself real, basically. You do your master told to do. Being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man humble himself. Who humble himself? Jesus. So there are two humility. God can brought in the man. His mighty hand, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And God's mighty hand make you humble. <laughs> and then there are willing humbly. Willing humbly. That's what the song is about. Willingly yield. To the father's preference of will. Become obedient to the death. So that obedience, so study that word obedience really, really means, okay? Because it's not about do or don't, obviously. It's much like a living sacrifice. A sheep led to the slander. That's the starting point. Even become obedient to death, but even death on the cross. Therefore, after that, haha, something happened. The process called the glorification happened. God exhorted him to the highest place, give him the name that is above every name. Make sure your name are where? Written where? That's how to get him down. And that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth under heaven. And every tongue confesses Christ the Lord to the glory of the Father. So from that place of love and humility, if you will, we enter into godly service. We become 
the extension God's love to humanity. Amen? Hallelujah. And that is the mind of Christ, which we expound in. Now this, how do I tell now this? This will entrust the works of the Holy Spirit. There's a fruit. I don't want to just expound too much, but it, last time I read this whole thing, the key chapter is Isaiah 11, right? So, Tim mentioned on last Tuesday as well. Let's turn to some brief here. So, because I want to talk about this key. So, in three, yeah. Fortunately, Tim didn't tramp on my toes sometimes. <laughs> he was delighted in the fear of the Lord. Ha! Delight! So I want to do some word study with you today in the notes. You can see there's delight and fear of the Lord. Okay. As a result, we are not judged by what his eyes see or decide by what his ear hear. To organ. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, eyes, ears. Now with that in mind, come with me to 13 chapter of Matthew, quickly. In 15 now. But this is people's heart, that's unbelieving people, unwilling people. Uh, become callous, they hardly hear with ears. What a problem, start with the heart. Then the organ are becoming infected, spiritual organ. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see, otherwise, they're not blinded, they're healed. See with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, the word means reverse the course. I would even say, means draw close to God. That very important concept, okay? Draw close to God. Delight in God. I would heal them. I will restore completely. I will give them the full life as I give to my son, Jesus Christ. That's what it means. And CT said, bless are the eyes. What? Your eyes. Bless your ears. <laughs> and then talking about the same thing, the righteous man, which we will talk about a little bit. There are a few righteous men I'm going to mention about it. So, turn fast forward. So, in 1 Corinthians 2 chapter, the mind of Christ, concentrate on the mind of Christ. Philippians, Isaiah 11, here, again, in 1 Corinthians 2, talk about the mind of Christ. Isaiah 11, talk about the Spirit of God is uh, enabling the Son of God to have that mind. Am I? Now, in is that one person? It's only the Lord Jesus Christ himself supposed to have it? Or supposed to be a pattern or the seed light to produce many other sounds? Similar, complete, full of understanding and wisdom, right? So, which is the second, Chorus, first, second chapter of 1 Corinthians talking about? Again, he uses uh, how he evokes the uh, imagery of being baby, newborn baby. Partake of spiritual milk, then grow up. Am I? What what partaking enable the mature basically? It is sins, believing by the spirit. But there's a pattern to it. So in two chapter, let's look at this. It is not a personal alignment per se. It's greater than that. It's internal wisdom. It's a mind, a heart of God, being given through the Son. Is that making sense to you guys? Okay. So in six that we do however speak a message wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, nor the ruler of this age. They have a, another kind of wisdom. I think that was a Pharisee fall into preceding this chapter in the first chapter of the Greeks and the Jews seeking a different kind of wisdom. But Christ is a reveal a different kind of wisdom, right? So another wisdom. Who are coming to nothing. Because this world can come to nothing. No, we speak God's secret, a hidden wisdom. A wisdom that be hidden and God destined, ha, destined for what? 
for our glory before time began. Wow. <laughs> Something before time began. For us to recover. It was always there. But the devil had uh, did the robbery class, am I? So, is it open? Or hidden? <laughs> Second, is not this what suppose that's predestination meant for? Are you really that predestined for eternal life without particular things? Just thinking about it. <laughs> so those kind of arguments continue to miss the point. My point. Yeah, you predestined to be saved. Then where is this hidden wisdom? Is it part to you? You can believe on that all day long, but do you have this wisdom? Are you living this life? Are you sure you have the Holy Spirit teaching you everything? Tell the mind Christ. We must know because no one has seen or has heard. This is a portion for sons and I for disciples. So look at in I the same quotation almost. However, as is written, no eyes see, no ears heard, no mind can see what God prepared for those who ah, wait on him. As I said, wait on him is one draw near to him. Now how you draw near to him, wait on him, except you become holy. God just don't matter. Anything <laughs> come do before him, right? You must dress properly, the right posture, by the way, you must offer the right sacrifice for your own sin, the shortcomings, am I? Well, which we talk about. So that implied a sense of fear and honor. That's oftentimes is missing when we talk to fear God. It's almost always qualified on our terms. Personal experiences. One day I I remember the early days while living near the neighborhood, Rachel, your neighborhood, and in Austin. There was this book recommended by a, a wonderful elder, said, hey, I would like for you to read these books. And uh, I said, well, I read three chapters, I said, feel and feel right. Especially instruction, he would say that he was sitting the somewhere in a quiet place, meditating on things, suddenly feel an uh, awesome presence something. Then he feel he needs to write this book. That is a scholarly book. So, God, I feel a lot about your presence all the time. <laughs> but I don't think that moment is pretty defined with the Holy Spirit. Right now I feel your presence, <laughs> but I don't know I'm holy or understand Holy Spirit. A lot to learn, a lot to know. So the Lord began to reveal to me the quality of so-called high scholars. <laughs> they really don't have a little to live up with God. <laughs> they fill their pages, they fill their time with their own studies, with their own imaginations, basically fabrication of their mind. To imagine this what happened this night. Imagine what a God revealed. Just imagine how this God teach. But they don't even have an encounter with God that often. <laughs> the God revealed there's a poor, poor soul. They're living in a condition, living in a school, that is all you got. <laughs> so, but when you're living in the overflow of God, or some living operation of God, <laughs> you might work slow to tell others how to read the Bible. <laughs> because <laughs> You don't know what it means for you yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you really don't want to use a scholarly spirit. For pros who said, I know what the fear of the Lord means. I want the holiness means. I don't want to write a book because I have an encounter with God. <laughs> Unless God downloaded that to me. Anyway, the saying these things is very, very interesting for me. That uh, we don't spend time, don't depend on the Holy Spirit to teach us with the rush ahead or go to our own library or resource fullness, try to produce our own stock of knowledge. I hope that, and I draw this experience out is to tell you, I thank God that it stopped me on track to go that way. 
And it always does that. You know? It always does that. I learned a habit from early days. I don't want to read any spiritual thing unless the Lord told me to read it. And any author, I can reference, I can know, but I don't want to model. Okay? Model is a different thing, you know? So, does that make sense to you? You know, you can reference, like a dictionary, <laughs> reference books. But I'm not going to have somebody tell me, this the way, do this. Does that make sense to you? You know, so, anyway. But the teaching of God, when it comes real, it must compel you to do something. It must have produced something. You know, it's it's not oppressed you. It's just invited you, and, and, and obligated you to comply to, to, to conform to. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. So, and I hope my teaching will do that effect. That you are turn the Holy Spirit for revelation, rather than fabrication and the complexity of mind. Let's turn to this. So, but ten here's the key words. But God revealed to us by what? By His Holy Spirit. The continued verses, you will see a spiritual man. He make a judgment. <laughs> He's equipped to judge. Ah, <laughs> like Jesus said, right? <laughs> they don't yield to any human court. We're in sense concept. All of this came from this one word, the fear of the Lord. Does <laughs> that make sense? Make sense to you? Now you can see Paul really understood the scriptures. Because they understand Hebrews, they understand the true meaning, what the Old Testament really meant. Especially like scripture, like Messianic scripture, like Isaiah 11, right? Talking about Christ's life, man. <laughs> it's not merely a prophecy. It's a tentative life. <laughs> the tree of life. At any rate, so... You can see 15 now, fast forward. The spiritual man, when is anointed, let's do that word, okay? Make judgment about all things. What? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, now you have those that said that you will judge angels if you are with Christ in certain capacities. But himself is not subject to any man judgment or any court judgment. For whom I know the mind of the Lord, that he may counsel, the word is right. And it's maybe a little bit of pragmatic counsel, okay? Give suggestion for judgment. I mean, this is the right or wrong, that is good or bad. But we have, Paul speaking one person, <laughs> are they perfect? He has Timothy, we're talking about them, right? Or Peter, others with, with him, considered the pillars of the church, whatever, my leaders. Do, are they perfect? He said, Philip, he said, I, I'm still not getting hold of it. <laughs> but at the same time, he said, no, I'm not going to yield to other kind of judgment. So what then Paul discovered that Jesus was so eager to open up as open door for this uh, hidden realm, hidden treasure of assumption? And that's what we want to go about. That's the mind of Christ. So I finish that in all, all to bring a greater context of the teaching of a seven spirit of God. It's the pattern life of Jesus through the minute Holy Spirit <coughs> impart the life <laughs> of the Son and the Father within us. He will in us. Amen? Within us. So you mature. Have the fellowship with the Father, with the Son, the Holy Spirit, as a Son portion. Become an honorable, respected member of God's household. It can be entrusted and can be useful for the Father's business. Am I? In the ministry of a sonship, which is Christ is adding, and the high priest is this order, sometimes we call it the order from above, order in New Testament, or in Hebrew book pretty qualified, a mystical um, term called the Order of Melchizedek. Am I? It's a ministry before the throne of God. It's the highest of all court. It's a supreme court, if you will. The final courts. So you have to think about those on legal constructs, like a covenant, judgment, amen, hallelujah. 
you know, all those uh, legal constructs. In the Old Testament, we see, I don't want to get into much, but just briefly mention a few characters here. Abraham, Abraham how grew in his life, or the fear of God. That gives us two distinct points. One is when God cut a covenant with him. In the middle of the night, put him to sleep. Uh, let's turn to it. He, Abraham, let's see how Abraham responded to God in this mighty encounter. That is Genesis 15. <coughs> It's me. You 15 said, so basically, God, in 17, um, the sun said, darkness fallen, the smoking fire pond with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces which were sacrificed by Abraham that day. And that day God cut a covenant with Abraham and then told him he would the land all those people, right? So, but if you look at it in that word place, Abraham was receiving this with awe and trouble. Okay, I'll try to see that. I don't, I don't see the particular verses there, but Pretty much Abraham was overwhelmed in a sense. Now another place Abraham like in the bit, I think 22 chapter, yeah, when he was tested, God told him to sacrifice Isaac uh, <laughs> on the mountain top, and uh, then God did something, and uh, huh? what's in the world? 20, 12, 12, say, 22, 12. <laughs> And said, uh, the, 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 the angel said to him, or the messenger, the Lord said to him, he, he confirmed, on two accounts, Abraham was confirmed because the reverend God according what he pleased with. Amen? He pleased God with his faith, okay? Amen? The first one, then God accredited Abraham in 15th chapter as righteous. He kind of condemns him thereafter. On this one, his faith was tested, and he pleased God again. So God said, give him this wonderful denotion, if you will, whatever. said, for now, I know that you fear God. I know. I tested it. And I know. Wow. Now I know. Now I know. You did some things that's unbelievable, <laughs> difficult for you. So, do we know? If God said He, in order to know, He has to put us through a test. And uh, then we need to also recognize some kind of karma. <laughs> Maybe one of us will test others in order to know something, right? So, I think Jesus did that to the disciples. <laughs> God invited Abraham and recognized Abraham's honor and believed in him. Met something. Then he is in turn, he blessed him. Much like Jesus, am I? Thereby he exhorted him above all other men. <laughs> That's a pattern. So, how about the Moses? The day of the burning bush? Moses pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Take off your sandals. Mm -hmm. Then the day before he departed from the earth. Seeing and cast vision for the coming generation, what they are to enter into. And there he gives some instruction. In Deuteronomy 10, 22, uh, 12 to 13. Tim, can you read that for us? Mm -hmm. And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. So, here it comes. 
He gave the essence of fear of God is, is combined with a loving God, obey God. Am I right? So, yeah. So the reverential engage with God in a way. And Solomon Exodus and it's 12, 13 said it basically after all, you know, Solomon's life, you know, so the conclusion concluded said, when all has been heard, Vanity after vanities, nothing any sense meaning. Is the conclusion is fear God <laughs> and keep His commandments because this apply to every person. God is very equal now, <laughs> very fair. The world of Sura honor Him. And do his will. And the Palazos would disown him, dishonor him, and rebel against him. Now, I don't have the time to go through the New Testament experience, which most of you are quite familiar with characters like Peter, like a John, like a Paul. To simplify, especially Paul had traumatic, traumatic experiences with this living God. From uh, being a Pharisee for all Pharisees, then turned to be knocked down. Who are you, Lord? Uh, terrified when knocked down the horseback on the road to Damascus. Then many years later, 14 or 17 years later, called back to the church, began to be on mission in the Gentile world. Then later they have the bonus to say, let me face Caesar for my trial. And, uh, I'm going to die for the Lord. I want to face the court of man, of all the land, the highest court. I'm going to face down that ruler. I'm going to tell him about my authority. <laughs> nah. And nothing has stopped me. <laughs> and that's Paul. Paul's passion is to die like Christ died. Man, that's real. <laughs> so think about it. So now, is this a fear of the Lord should be teach you? Bet. <laughs> but how are being taught? Topically? I hope we don't walk away from here. Think it can be topically now. But it should be taught I gave up a whole thing today can be taught by as a culture, as a people. That's always God designed to be so. Through Moses, through Solomon, through, I mean, Abraham, I mean, everyone was targeting a people, a cultured people, that God will be the God and they will be his uh, people. A man who will please uh, with him to love him and right? so you know with all the heart all the mind or strength and god will mm, just so satisfied by them you know as a pride of pride of father am right? i wow that's my child that's my children my sorry <laughs> my people you know that's my family does that make sense to you but it's always start with a personal you have to have personal practices before it becomes a people. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're going to engage that little bit to start with there. So it's a from personal reverence of God to culture for honor and respect. Hallelujah. You should make sure that you will of loving God, respect God, will be a fountain head for others to be nurtured, to be benefited. That's your food. That's your spiritual provision for others. So you need to teach this if you're the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Make sure their name are written in heaven. <laughs> Disciple them in such a way. Provide that spiritual food. Now turn with me to Psalms 34. Let's look at David. I intentionally reserve this concept because Psalms 34 is a wonderful psalm. That's David. This wonderful portion. Look at this. It's so amazing, man. So amazing. You, you know, he said, ah. <laughs> in eight. Look at this. Ah. 
pissed. I was talking to West this today. I said, you know, some imager came to me and said, you know what, man? You know, if you're a flower, you're cream of your essence. Is giving a sweet aroma, man. And the bee come around, how I said it. But if you're a gardener, you raise out the beans, and the flower finally have the chance to harvest the honey, right? You taste the honey. <gasps> yeah. God is amazing. He wants to all of that. You know, flower, bee, and the taste of honey. <laughs> taste and the see that Lord's good. More than they, we have many privileges while it is a oh, everybody tastes honey you, know? <laughs> you can buy from any store but hey honey is a word word rarity <laughs> the ancient times right so think about it especially in the land like the plastic am i so yeah so bless the man who take refuge in him that brother andy this yesterday last night have vision the bunch of us, I, I think that's bird, boat, whatever, stock, is getting into this sealed, uh, sealed door, whatever, you know, like a, like a what is it called, the, you know, the door gets sealed up, you know, like a back, airlock. yeah, oh, airlock door, yeah, exactly, it's a secret place, you know, refuge, yeah, think about it, you are entering the God's secret, <laughs> It's not dry up. You got the honey there. <laughs> you got the living river there. You got the hidden garden there. I'm telling you. Huh? Pure and good and undefiled. Pristine, man. <laughs> Everything pristine. Yeah. But let's look at this. In 11 setting. Come. You know, when you, in nice, I'm sorry, fear the Lord, you, he's a holy one. For those who fear him lack like nothing. Wow, even lions come to like something, but you have a God. It's not refuge merely from a cruelty or difficulty. It's really a treasure horse, am I? A horse of full provision. Huh? Even lions can wear it out, you know? but you will not run dry. So there you go. The lion may grow weak and hungry, but those will see the Lord lack like no good things. Hallelujah. May, may, may. Especially spiritual privileges. Come, my children, listen to me. What he said? I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we raise our hand? Pray to God. May God teach us the fear of the Lord. Amen. Yes, From bottom of our heart, may we taste that is good. <laughs> and as the words, the honey is honey on the rock. I don't care what you went through. I'm sorry to see that. But God is good. And what you went through only sweetened his goodness, proved his faithfulness. And will secure your course like he did to Abraham, Moses. David, Solomon, and many uh, saints through the ages to ride his life in your heart. May the Lord bless you now, and may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord indeed make his face shine upon you. May you not be dismayed, but rejoice in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, hallelujah. Anyway, so we can see the teaching of the fear of the Lord is a mission, is a discipleship, right? It's imparting more than a personal approach, the man, like it is a Christ attitude. It's also a culture, it's a mission, discipleship. The man, hallelujah. Personal example, impart how to love God, reverend God. Understand that we want to build a culture, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that be done. Now, to bring 
in two and <laughs> second point on this this, this head, head, heading how to teach this is will bring the disciple believers of mind to be in line with the mind of Christ which I have been talking about but this is a personal mission if you will this is a ministry am I this is a ministry of apostolic teachings so the scripture clearly talk about this, okay? Let's look at this from this angle to read what the scripture are really talking about, okay? That is scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 8. Because oftentimes we talk about the spiritual warfare, dealing with demons. We don't ever think about, well, maybe there are much more. Demons can be subdued. Man can be healed. But make sure your name are... <laughs> there is much more. <laughs> this revelation and this impartation also through a ministry. The man, the teaching of the word of God, the teaching of the fear of God, all the culture of God. Let's look at it in Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 8. So though we walk in the flesh, as that's in this mortal body, we do not war against, let's use the word, we don't oppose. Or a calm according to the flesh. It's very important to know you're opposing something and you overcoming something, okay? War means something. For the weapons, words, word, weapons, sometimes we use the word weapon, but if you think about it, it's more than weapons, it's equipping, okay? A weaponry, rather, of our warfare, this engagement, opposition. Because the weapons of, that's obviously is a very human history, human experience to highlight. But it's more than that. Paul was talking about arguments, he's talking about the mindsets, am I? He was not merely talking about the war, he was talking about how one school or one way of thinking or one culture of life can overtake another way. I subdue it on the way, if you will. The word is, sounds bad, but it's subdue, am I? Subdue. Am I? To put it out of place, put out of function. Am I? Hallelujah. That's the garment of me. So the kingdom come, then the peace, the righteous, and goodness of God shall reign. Am I? We are, uh, well, I'm sorry, the warfare, not the flesh, not the immortal man's mind, or worldly thinking. But divinely powerful for the destruction of fortress strongholds. Okay, we are enjoying speculations. One, what speculations? Hey, Paul knows what speculation is about God's ways, about them, right? He was there. I'm sorry, every lofty thing reads up. Hey, Paul knows Greek God, Greek philosophers, pretty lofty against the knowledge or the wisdom of God. The knowledge of God, the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Need the things God wants to give to his sons, his disciples. And we are taking every thought captive. Ah, make it a, a bond slave. <laughs> and that one was not to subjugate it, to make you shameful. This uh, uh, dis disabled, whatever. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. We want you to be a fellow captain with you to be like a son of God, <laughs> to be that bound slave to God, the Father. That's what he said. Hmm. Different way of thinking, huh? <laughs> to the obedience Christ, see? Obedience Christ is more than obedience of one person. <laughs> he did. For oh, sure, but it's the same obedience, the same pattern life. Amen. A humble obedience to the Father. That's what it made. Ah, so godliness begins to make a sense. It's a great mystery. We hear other places on the godliness, is a great mystery. The Philippine, the portion we mentioned in this chapter, it's a great mystery. And then we are ready to punish every disobedience when, when, once your obedience are complete. Ah, your obedience can be complete? Ah, I thought your obedience every day, ongoing, never stop. <laughs> Why? Why? Because the will of life. Once you reach a certain level of maturity, 
and the familiarity is embedded in your heart. It's ingrained in your thinking. It is naturally come out of you. It's the same with you. When with you now, and when that happened, well, you do everything out of obedience. You don't think about it. <laughs> because you're one with God, one with the Father, one with the Son, through the anointing the Spirit. Yeah? So, I punish everything. Every ask for lawlessness. <laughs> That's more than a person. Oh, I'm not going to do this. You know? <laughs> Is that making sense here? Yeah. So it was talking about, I want to bring this a godly culture, an orderly way in the midst of God's people. But started with the individual. Started as a wheel for setting place. This ministry has a founder. It's a launching pad. It has a founder. It's a foundational place. If it cannot do, I mean, how in the world can build a house without a foundation? How in the world can I start a garden without a Turn the boundary line for where we are supposed to plant. My God, we need to get the funding head up, am I? So we need to get a cornerstone start, am I? So, yeah. So Paul said, let's get this cornerstone down. So today, I pray, you see the cornerstone be laid in right. In our community, please, the funding head of up. Amen. In our spiritual garden. So, in many places, the fear of the Lord is a speaking about as a beginning of wisdom. I quote this only three verses to say. It's a beginning of wisdom, beginning of knowledge, the beginning of one's understanding. Look at the three words a beginning of wisdom, beginning of knowledge, beginning of wisdom or understanding. And those three things are spirits, what? Well, Different spirits in the seven spirits, am I? As listed in Isaiah 11. So it started with uh, the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, let's first study the word of beginning. Mm -hmm. I have a dictionary with you, so the word study said, what is the first? Huh? The initiation action on the process. So the beginning is not merely the first most important meaning, it's not the time. Am I? Sequence. Am I? It's not about time. It's <laughs> the beginning. Here, next one. It was about initiation about something. Yeah? What is the first? Put the things first. Put this first. Does that make sense to you? So first you need to have the fear of the Lord. Only when you have the fear of the Lord that you can initiate the further growth and the further flow of the mirrors of the Holy Spirit. Have you found many people come to with an irreverent heart, unwilling heart, on the four attitudes to fellowship before God, expect something can happen? Have it happened? James said, a double-minded man do not expect God to speak in wisdom. So he do not have the fear of the Lord. Therefore, he will not have wisdom. The wisdom he will see is not God. Sensual, demonic, earthly. It's not wisdom from above. But if you want to have the wisdom from God, James said, you better get your roots right. Your river source pure. All right? So get your heart clean. Make sure you have a clean heart. The fear of the Lord is a pure. Man, don't we know what is pure and not pure? I uh, hope you do. <laughs> I mean, so. You drink water, you know what it means. Mm -hmm. So why you don't apply the same standard to one you're facing every day? Mm -hmm. Your children, your husband, yourself. It's hard. I understand. But that's how you start. If you get that started, <laughs> they don't put the bushes. <laughs> why you don't do that? Why you do all this? No, no, no. I want to be real quiet with you. Do you have a pure heart right now? Towards me? Towards that matter? Towards God? Towards young man? Towards whatever. Do you, do, you, do you really think you have a pure heart at this moment? When you talk like that? Emotion like that? Go about things like reason like that? Or upset with that? Really? Really? 
will, will come to that foundational moment. You know, every relation can be reconfigured. <laughs> every relation can come to work out, all right? Because that's when God began to pour His wisdom. He began to show that. Amen. Hallelujah. That's when we begin to exercise love, patience, forgiveness, more important, compassion, and mutual support. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. We all know the lovely, pure things. We want to help to not be defiled. Am I? We want to protect it and help it with whatever we got. Am I? <laughs> yeah. No. Inspire that. Secure that in us. First, we have to do it as a light. We make that happen. Before we ask anybody to treat us in this way, we must first be it or do it. If we're not doing it, yes. Hmm. Hope you have a strong argument. <laughs> hope, hope have you, you have to exalt our tricks. <laughs> and by the way, God may not have shown up. But may not be on your side. Maybe you will be humiliated or frustrated or defeated. And I hope that's good. You're still on in good side with God. God still think it displayed you know, so, and not rejecting you or give you up. Bible said the reprobate mind God gave them up. That's terrible. That's we a fearful thing. So the second word is a fear. Let's look at the fear. What it means is you know the wrong translation. English more than the English, especially carry a lot of connotations, and um, we don't necessarily want to apply when we read the two scriptures. So it's a state of piety and respect. So that's the first meaning. The fear, okay? The Hebrew word. Then the second is act, the speech, the shame, profound reverence toward the superior. Well, when you talk about the fear of the Lord, so like a love, you got to know who you're facing with. It's very important. This one, there's a two with you. He said, Paul defined the word well, God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. It's a God. It's a King of Kings. It's a Supreme. It's a Majesty One. And see if I is your Father. So on either side, we should come with a sense of respect. And they together. That's the beauty of this. And this is a mystery of these things. Mm. And also, I mean, He's not mad. He's a holy. He's a side this world so he's awesome he's wondrous wonderful so all of this fear do you see human emotion humankind fear of facing this awesome god invoke naturally this fear does that make sense to you mm -hmm. so oftentimes we talk with the fear of the lord <gasps> oh i'm not worthy oh look at that man this is born on that oh that man just died <laughs> you know some of us you know, <laughs> So, so oftentimes we come to the human side to consider this word, not from the mind of Christ. Mm. Can we correct that today? Hallelujah. And what the mind of Christ is, he said, I delight in the fear of the Lord. That is uh, the words of read Isaiah 11, right? I delight in the fear of the Lord. Let's look at the word delight. Delight means join near. Something like so much, man. You can't just stand aside. So here, you basically put your nose like a beautiful smell, so good that flower. <laughs> yeah, that make sense here. Yeah. I, I, I see the other day I look at a certain dog. You don't want to lick the candy or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or the child, you know. <laughs> you can't help. <laughs> yeah. So it's a smelling of a pleasant aroma. Well, I'm going to give you two pictures there fragrance and the sacrifice on the altar. My sweet aroma. Mm -hmm. I don't want to expound too much. The second word there is a fragrance. Again, the same thing. 
uh, frankincense, I'm sorry, the, the, the myrrh, frankincense, sky found the altar for incense, have a sweet aroma, right? So, yeah, so is the sacrifice on the altar burning, I'm sorry, the, uh, you know, the, the, the lamb, the ball, you know, the parts burn with smoke, and I smell so good, you know, so. Now I want to do, I want to call it, uh, to, to introduce this word. Prior to the same word, look at this. You know, when you smell something, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> look at that. Breathing so hard, uh, uh, so deep. <laughs> you know, then you don't like something, stink, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you want to... <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Uh, that word. The reap. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to get closer. <laughs> you know, so. I don't want to see you, Max. <laughs> don't stand before me. <laughs> oh, that's God. Look at the man, the sacrifices. Cain and Abel. Yeah. <laughs> the true bride and the false bride. Mm. The good servants and the, those bad servants. Yeah? Be careful when God said, <laughs> get out of here. That's terrible. So, that's a sense of hospitality. The word there is, you know, that word opposed to that is a, basically being legal charge against somebody. Do you hear something there? Who put a legal charge against the sense, please? <laughs> to one man is a smell of uh, life. <laughs> to other is a smell of a uh, stench of a... Uh... There you go. So basically, a po open, the similar word said, open opposition to one another, disputing, quarreling, legal disputes, grievances, taunting, insulting, fighting, accuser, persecutor, paying distress. Ah, that's a pretty a marker of some personality there called uh, the devil, right? Satan, the opposer of God's people, the accuser of the brethren, amen, hallelujah, and cause Anyone receive that kind of false charge or accusation, their pain, am I? The full distress. Uh, is that making sense to you? And God is grieved by such evil when man becomes its uh, weapons, instruments. Weapon, instruments, and vessels are the same word in Greek, okay? Mm. Weapon, instruments, and vessel. So when you, sometimes you want to, interchangeable is think about it something you can be a master skilled player or craftsman with that thing okay you can use your hand basically to do good to <laughs> wonderful things with it so anyway i don't want to i'm already one and a half hour you're having fun. I'm only half part into it, half into it. <laughs> only start the second point, we show what are we doing here, man? So, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think we should wrap up. Maybe next time I'm going to continue. And uh, on the, I don't, maybe you don't need to teach. I think I draw everything up pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can see it's a personal part of heart. So I want you to guide to yourself to think about it, to make application yourself. It's for young people, if you can. Mm -hmm. How I posture my heart in the ways that pleasing to God. God want to draw close to us. How I can start with God is good. He, I taste, smell Him is good, am I? How can I draw, him, draw near to Him? Mm -hmm. To treat Him like a better treasure the best honey, the best thing, the best friend, the best father. And the second is that, one, I want to know, allow 
of my Lord Jesus Christ. His love towards His Father. Am I? Because that's when I really want to model after. Yeah. The second is uh, more uh, duty. We have uh, this divine duty. To more than make that relationship work for ourselves, we need to uh, populate it, multiply it. So it becomes a cultural norm and practice. Now, cultural norm, you don't get cultural norm without building it up. Amen? Without first initiate it, make it grow, then bring to a place completion or perfection. Then maintain it. Then keep it. So I want to share with you, then thinking about it, is it sometimes it is very difficult to start something new. But even start something new as difficult as it is, it's difficult to build it up to completion, right? To finish it. Think about the build a temple. I mean, even you finish it, put everything to place, God glory showed up. It's very hard to keep it. Perpetual, right? Never change. So we need to think about the culture in these three endeavors as well on a personal level. Amen. Hallelujah. And on the level as people. To so exemplify God's culture. We're not going to be the settled. Oh, we all want it. <laughs> we need to shape gear sooner or later. So let's do it. Let's get it done. <laughs> and once we've got it, <laughs> we need to really pay attention to safeguard it. Like a watchman on the wall, right? It's like a gatekeeper's mighty gate. Amen. Hallelujah. To so make sure. That this unexpanded, only beautified, only overflows, rather deteriorate or corrupt. Yeah, the worst part for any people of God is when God bless us with something so good, so wonderful, so protective, like the Israelites is old, then we let it slide away. Amen. Hallelujah. You know. I'm getting older and thinking about my life. You know, there is a certain saying in Chinese called, when you're 50, you know your heavenly destiny. I know my heavenly destiny to a certain extent, but my destiny, I think, not contagious, not worthy for fulfillment. But one of the things I want to make sure my life in the Lord is I will finish well. Mm. I want those with me finish very well. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes I'm being hard on certain ways. Because you know it's a seed of corruption. It's going to tear things down. It's like yeast. It's like things going to, you know, have you live with certain cancerous things? I don't know. There are certain things you can't allow it to stay. You don't want fungus to start somewhere. You don't want the mold to stay in your home, right? Just un, 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 undealt with. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the fruits of the fear of the Lord. I still have three minutes. Now, personal level, you know, you can have intimacy with God. Amen. We have the right. Of Fear of the Lord, God will be very close to you. I mean, I in my life have deviations, okay, deviations. But there are times and I was like so one with God. It was like uncanny, man. <laughs> it's not supernatural ability. It's just like my heart was so clear what God wants. I mean, I was like, I can see everybody's heart. Whether it's in, in line with God's heart or not. Oh, you know. <laughs> Whether in the spirit or in the flesh. You know? <laughs> I can read their mind like reading the uh, diagrams. <laughs> I don't know why they see that. Why they look at like that. You know? So it was very, very terrible experience at the same time. <laughs> because I can't tell anybody. You know? so, yeah. I'm sorry. and uh, But. Listen, God can do those things, 
The reason I think it does it to me is a gear to me. Hey, look, I'm watching you, okay? <laughs> I know. That's not a really fearful, accusing attitude. Oh, we're not going to smack you, you know. Oh, something you're wrong. No, 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 hey, get yourself together. Do better, please, you know. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> do better. You can do better. You can do better. I'm with you. I'm, I'm going for you. I mean, I'm, you know, I set a standard for you. So, so love on the God, that is very personal. And must combine with the fear of the Lord, you know. First Corinthians again said, He revealed those who love Him. I mean, that's divine entrustment. The more you love Him, the more you have wisdom. The more wisdom you have, the more love you have. I'm telling you, this is, a, this is an engine of increase mm -hmm. of Godliness. Partaking the divine nature, become a self involving engine. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, that's when you kick off the wheel within the wheel. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when your life begins to move, man, heaven moves, I tell you. But God is so delighted to support your course. Especially, I mean, you understand? You know, so the first will is yourself, okay? The second will is God's culture, what He entrusts to you. So, wisdom, obviously, as I shared, wisdom is the beginning of wisdom, right? So, and entrustment, guys, when you have the fear of the Lord, people, and God can trust you. I mean, you understand? You know, does that make sense to you? You pray God in the West. And He can trust you because what? You're not going to defile God's name. You, you have something to fear about. You, know? you have a, a boundary line. You, 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 you know, you, you're under some restraint. It's not merely morally what do and the right. It's, it's just like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to deceive people. I'm going to break my word easily. I mean, even not thinking about it, you know. I'm not going to throw my attitudes all day long. I think there's no consequences. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This chair is empty now. <laughs> no, no, she has to share me dinner, don't worry. <laughs> We're nice with her. <laughs> See the next to me, man. It's a fulfillment of life. That delight in the fear of the Lord is very personal. You know, when you know God's love, nearness to you, and His approval unto you. I mean, think about it. You approve by God. I'm oh, my. <laughs> no man can judge you. <laughs> my. Not arrogantly, but empty yourself. Amen. You're not gonna judge yourself. You're not defend yourself. You don't vindicate yourself. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, I did that. Yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. But uh, hey, I'm gonna do better. <laughs> Second thing. Yeah, that's that. No, no, not that one. <laughs> no, that one. <laughs> you know that one? No, 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 no. <laughs> I can consciously face God and know His smile and me. I, I didn't do that. That's not me. That's not why I did it. <laughs> you can see what everyone to say, but uh, hey, hey, He knows. It's so free and so constraining. <laughs> We're much of dilemma. Uh, culturally speaking, I want to talk about uh, a 444. Look at that. We have four things to talk about. Look at that. The God in the love. You know, when you know God, you can love Him, you know how to love one another. You love him, uh, one another not because you want to it. You rather from a, a world reader's region. You see what God wants, what God has for them, why God have you loved them. But well, you know, you also don't volunteer for things that maybe it's not the intended for you to be or the world. You can step away clean conscious. Oh, that's not my business. That's that's not out of my boundary, out of my purview. Amen. Hallelujah. You know. Rather than let religion or our own senses, our short, 
Sadness to compel us to feel always places a guilty trick, right? You know, maybe I'm not done. Maybe I'm done wrong. Don't do maybes. When you do maybes, slow down. <laughs> Don't just do maybe. Other than obligation or pressure to do something further, further. Am I? More and more walk away from the original. Why, why we start doing these things? Well, I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> Three years ago, hmm, something. <laughs> you can't even retreat why I started. Because that's how the devil do that, am I? You know, so. He lead, lead you in meandering, you know. Rather let you simply come to have a living, continual relation with the living God. So you have your life. You eat the love one another. Because you don't treat them with contempt. You don't love them for yourself interest, self-gain, or just the target your personal <coughs> affection. You love them because God loved them. You love them because God is purposely to, to involve the life. Now, great love is a discipline question. Why you do that? What's wrong with you? That's love. Why? Because you make sure that heart answer your heart that you know that he is ready and you're ready to help him to get over the shortcoming and get on the right side, right? And life don't need to spring around. <laughs> Relation don't have to be wasted in the wasteland. And then how we can have agreement, we can have awareness, we can get on the right side. So, love, honor, ma. Ah, that's a bigger or respect, you know. Honor is not garnered by how affectionate I am anymore. Honor is a culture. You know? Let's not use a hierarchy with this. You know? I sure as a mother. When you face your children, if I acting as if you're not a mother or some way you give your children you ignore your mother role in that's not the honor I mean, hallelujah i may do things agreeable to you or not not agreeable to you but that doesn't matter but in your heart of heart and in the essence of my heart and my understanding gaze and you're the mother i support you as a mother i want to do the best to support you to be the better mother i will not usurp you, I'm not going to manipulate you, I'm not going to for you to rise up with my hopefully to be a better mother, am I? That's honor. That's honor. But don't challenge you whether you should be a mother or not, whether you're a good mother or not. That's something to need massage sometimes, but sure. <laughs> but I don't ever say, sure, it's just no mother at all. You know, that's where bad, am I? How you even start a relationship with those children with you? If I dishonor you in that regard, you don't want me to be in your life. Please. I'm if I'm a sensible man, I don't want to even get close to you. Because what? Because I only do harm to your life, not help it. So in that light we see love and the honor this Inevitably, produce a kind of peace, mm -hmm. have harmony with one another, mm -hmm. but work towards it from chaos, from conflict, from misunderstanding, of place, agreement, unity, and collaborate. Have a nice time. Huh? And then we we'll do that. Oh my, we're not on the wrong side, rub each other on the wrong way anymore. We have a joy, we're glad to see each other, you know. We don't have a corner, we don't have a shadow, we don't things, you know. <laughs> Am I? You are more than stable, you are trustworthy. And every time I come to you, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm encouraged. I feel supported. You know, I truly found a, f a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, <laughs> whatever, a friend, you know. Uh -huh. Wow, okay. <laughs> I don't want to pretend 
I try to do. I am it. And I don't need to, to command or demand or compel us to be a good brother, sister to me. They are. Amen? And we can work towards improvement and betterment. We're not going to stumble and never get anywhere, right? With the bushes all day. <laughs> I think we're getting somewhere. So that's what the Paul's speaking about. He said, this is the kingdom culture by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Through the Holy Spirit. In Romans 14, 17, said, Hey, it's not about eating and drinking, the ceremonial thing, why you do what, do basically congregating together for some kind of a formal or ritual activities. And no, no, no. The kingdom of God, which God's people are supposed to be, is a righteousness, peace, and joy, or delight, <laughs> delight in the Holy Spirit. In what? In the Holy Spirit. Let's ask, is ecstasy? Is it laughter? Ever, ever drop the chair? <laughs> no! <laughs> it's the overflowing of ministry of the Holy Spirit in the sevenfold. Am I? Produce a, a culture, you know? Am I? Hallelujah. Is that amazing thinking about it? So it's not an occasional thing, it's a culture thing. It is not an experiential thing in the sense only have events. Or spontaneous. It's the life disciplined, conform to the likeness of uh, the Son of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. It pretty much follow a model on the planet and follow a way of life. Mm-hmm. For we who in this way <laughs> serve the Lord Christ is acceptable to God, become a living sacrifice to God, acceptable to Him. The same book. Approved by man. That's interesting. Ah. To the two audiences. Basically, a priest. Mm. Eh? That's a priestly proposition here. Mm. One part, you're facing God. The other, you're serving the people of God. Mm. So then we, when we pursue the thing which make for peace. Ah, there are things what? Make for peace. And then building up each other with that, I know we will wrap up. I want the brother team to bless us. I hope everybody is excited as I am. I think these things are very meaningful, very meaningful. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are indeed joyful in the heart and thankful for the the provision of your way of life and lord that you lead us in it lord you promised as a as a as a portion of your promise to to remove the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh you also said that you instruct all of your sons saying they would all be taught by god Yet, mankind has continued to try to be a teacher to himself, even with your word in hand, but has turned his back in many ways on the the leading of the Spirit in the recognition and partnering, co-laboring with the work of the Spirit in the inner man, and then in the midst of your people, and then to the world. Lord, we don't want to live under that shadow anymore. Yeah. Lord, we would desire that our hearts no longer be veiled. Mm. Thank you, Lord. So that when we see, we can see, as Jesus said to his own disciples. Mm. And be blessed by what we see and hear mm. and do. Mm. So Lord, bless your people in this way. Let whoever has an ear. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to those who he has called apart and set apart for his purposes. That we may be drawn into oneness and unity with you Mm. by the way of your Spirit. Mm. And then also to one another through that same Spirit of unity. 
And this, your name will truly be raised up. Your wisdom will surely be seen for what it really is and known as your person and as that which wholly defines and describes what you are. You said, again, that it would be like a diadem in your hands and it will become a glorious crown on your head. Those are really beautiful pictures. It's hard for us to imagine that that kind of glory, that kind of splendor, that we would have any part in it. But you have said it to be so. And Lord, we believe it. Amen. And so, not by judging ourselves or looking upon our own lives to see where and how that has been done. Rather, we fix our eyes on the one who has said he is both the author and the finisher. The one who begins and completes the very good work. So we entrust our lives to you, Lord, and take joy in the process, knowing what the end is, Christ in us. And that's the glory we hope for. So we bless your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.